Agriji Kakasa, Agriji Kifate, welcome back to another episode of Voice of Youth. So it has been a while since I've done an episode, it's because I wanted to take a little break in between the episodes where I was going to just talk to the camera again, talk to you itself. And then what do you know, time flew, my whole uh, understanding of time just became warped and I'm now here I am. So what's this important topic? What we want to talk about today is how the world came into creation trying to understand that and i'm not going into this with the understanding that i know everything there is to do with this topic because it's so huge and it's such a big thing to do um i'm not trying to say that i'm very knowledgeable in this i'm simply what i'm trying to do is figure out a simple way in which we can ask youth and get youth thinking what do they know about this topic itself because i know growing up as a youth it wasn't something that was talked about all that much and especially when you compare we do live in a christian dominated society and nothing wrong with that but everyone would probably know about either the seven days of creation adam and eve all this kind of stuff but then i want you if you're a parent there watching this with your child ask them how they think you know sikhs believe that the world was created or what their understanding of it is um or if you're you use itself watching this what do you think it is because what i'm doing is i have this book Seek Faith for the Youth by Guru Baksh Singh Questions and Answers. And in this, I'm simply going to just read out what this book says and just hopefully promote that kind of um, the cogs in your mind to think about what's going on. You can do your deeper reading as itself because once again, I don't know everything about this topic. Um, I'm simply trying to kickstart you and, you know, people around you to kind of think about these things that we don't normally think about as Sikhs or normally discuss in like a public domain. So let's get to the page itself and what this book says. So I'm not going to read out everything that this book says because there's uh, Creation of the Universe is on page 16 in case you do have it or you can read an online copy or something. What I'll try to do, I'll try to take good pictures of the pages and put them on screen beside me. But otherwise, I'm just going to read a little bit so you can get the right idea of what this is trying to say about the creation of the universe itself. So 16 and 17, um, if you do have the book and you want to read it yourself and also see all the other questions. I'll use this as a reference in future videos just so we can talk about and kickstart discussions or more video or more topics, sorry. And then if anyone ever wants to dive deeper into this, we can have a discussion, maybe not necessarily as an episode of Voice of Youth, it can just be a normal discussion. We can set up a Zoom call or, you know, once restrictions ease and we can meet up in person, we can meet up in person and have a discussion or something like that. So I'm going to read the starting because the best way to actually understand a passage of text, I believe is what I remember being taught in school, is you read the beginning, you read the end, and that should pretty much summarize everything that's going on. So let's just talk about it. To humans, it will ever remain a mystery how Waiguru created the universe and from where he got the first molecule of matter as mentioned earlier, just imagine a drop of water trying to know how big the sea is and how it was created. The drop of water can never discover the answer. Gurbani says, our search for Waiguru is like the search of the sea by the drops. A grain of sugar sent down in the sea to know the depth of water can never come back to tell the story. Our lives are too short to realize the depth of our creation of the creator. We cannot find the boundary of even its single direction or aspect. So what's that trying to say? That's simply saying that the world and everything we're trying to learn in this is too large for us to even properly fathom. So trying to find out an answer like this, which is a matter of the past, to be honest, uh, it's it won't give you any fruit. Like it may you may gain some knowledge, and obviously us talking about this. Why are we talking about it then <laughs> for a reason? Gain some knowledge, gain some understanding, but focus on the here and now. Trying to understand, you know, you're gonna get lost. You're gonna be that sugar cube. You're gonna get lost in the sea, basically. There is another facet of the creation of this universe which needs to be discussed here. Why God created this universe for us to enjoy it and do our duty. Finding out when and how the universe was created is not the goal of life. There you go. Carrying on that, it says what I tried bringing it up earlier about how focusing on what you're meant to do here and now in this life, not what happened in the past necessarily regarding creation of the universe. Gurmut says that life is not to be wasted in meaningless pursuits. Let us accept the creation of the earth, sun and everything else that is here with us. We also know they would continue to be here even after we die. So then also says, even if the Big Bang Theory is true, the question who created the bang still remains unanswered. 
some power shall have to be held responsible for causing the bang and later guiding the molecules to become alive. And in the final paragraph itself, whatever visible nature there is, it may be considered as visible Waigru or the body of Waigru. The invisible force, which we think is energy, may be accepted as Waigru in his invisible form. Let's make a start with this knowledge and work further. We will be able to see Waigru as sages have already done. What is talked about there, we talk, mentioned the Big Bang Theory, it also talked about focusing on the here and now. So it's tied into the scientific explanation for the creation of the world, but it also takes out this uh, Shabbat itself. Um, what I'll do, I'll just read the English meaning. That wasn't the English meaning, but I'll read the English meaning now. Um, with this single order, whole creation came into existence, and millions of rivers, sources of lives, were created. Waigru created the gases, the gases produced water, from water many forms of life originated. He is in everyone. So it essentially says Waigru just created everything. Maybe that you want to delve deeper into that, maybe you think that's satisfying enough, that's, you know, very simple, at least that's what this book is telling us that's what's happened. Maybe you want to do some di deeper reading, look into more Shabbos that talk about the creation of the universe itself and anything else like that. Talk to your family, talk to your friends about this. Maybe see what other topics there are that you want to get, uh, you know, some knowledge about or just get that kickstart going like I mentioned. So I hope you have maybe got something out of this. Obviously, this is a short video. I'm not trying to go into a really deep understanding of the creation of the universe. Like I said, I just want you to, you know, flip that ignition switch and just have a basic understanding or have that thought in your mind. So if someone ever asks you, what do Sikhs believe on the creation of the universe? You can answer that we believe Waigru created everything. The specifics of which is something we can't fathom. And then you can bring up the sugar cube, the raindrop in the ocean, all this kind of stuff as a way to really uh, ground the concept itself. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I'm very grateful for you all watching Voice of Views. I hope you come back in the next episode itself. Make sure you do like, comment and share and